welcome to another lesson in this tutorial. In this lesson, we're going to be briefly looking at text. And this is a subject that's a lot more important than you might have realized, because everything in your score, and I mean literally everything except for the lines, is actually a font. That is to say that all of these symbols, the note heads, clefs, key signatures, etc, 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 are actually just text, which means that if we really wanted to, we could change any of these things by simply changing their text type. So text and fonts in general are incredibly important to notation software. So first things first, in the text tab on the left hand side, you'll probably have noticed that we can change the parameters of specific text fields. So if I, for example, were to click on some random text field in my score, here I could change its text type, or I could make it into music text. I can also change its font, or make it bold or italic. I can change its size, and I can even change its alignment. So we have a lot of different options available to us here. However, as I briefly mentioned in a previous video, I would advise you not to change text here, unless it's really necessary or literally just a one-off thing. One of the biggest things that makes an amateur score stand out is irregularity. Particularly irregularity in the layout and in the text, like you can see here, for example. Because all of the text fields that you can see here belong to the same text style or text type, Really, they should all be consistent in style and size. Now, obviously, when these inconsistencies are all next to each other, as they are in this particular example, you can clearly see the differences in size and style. But if these were spread out across your score, it wouldn't be as immediately obvious. The inconsistency would become more obvious in the individual instrumental parts. And if you're continually changing and formatting your text fields here, directly underneath the text tab, from instance to instance, you'll inevitably end up with some sort of inconsistency. So if you'd like to format a text style or change it in some way, you really should refrain from doing it here and rather do it in the Edit Text Styles window, which can be found by clicking the mini arrow in the Styles section. Or, alternatively, we can use the hotkey Control alt shift t Now you've probably already been here, but what you might not have realized is that from here we basically have control over the formatting of all symbols in our score. For example, the text style Common Symbols is a text style that defines the formatting of the most common music symbols in our score. So just as a demonstration, if I double click it to open it up and then drastically increase the font size and then hit OK, you'll then see that all of the musical material in my score has been changed accordingly. And of course I'm doing this just to show you how dependent the musical formatting is on our text styles. But what this means is that it's really worthwhile becoming well acquainted with the Edit Text Styles window, because if you know your way around here well, you'll be able to do a lot of very powerful things. But let's now look at something a little bit more practical. A title, for example. In the Edit Text Style window, we can do many commonplace things, like changing the font, the style, the size in the score, the size in the parts, the line spacing, paragraph gaps, etc, etc. But we can also do some other neat little things. Changing the tracking, for example. This will add more space between your letters. I personally like to use this sometimes in my own compositions. But we can also change the horizontal scale of our text. And of course, also the vertical scale. In addition to this, we can also change the angle of our text. Now this might seem a bit odd, and we probably won't need it for a title, but I'm always surprised by how often I actually need some of these features. For example, in some cases, composers like to write the place and date that they finished a composition 
vertically aligned to the final bar line. I'll show you what I mean. In the Edit Textiles window, I'm first going to create a new textile based on Technique. And then I'm going to change the angle of this new textile to 90 degrees. And in addition to this, I'm just going to make the font a little bit smaller. Then I'm going to give it a name. And I'm done. I can then add this to the score. It should appear next to the normal technique text. I then enter in some information. And now that I'm done, I can simply just line this up with my final bar line. Not too bad, huh? So you have to be a bit careful not to overlook some of these features. They could end up being more useful than you might think. And there are, of course, many other things that we can change in the Edit Textiles window. There are different border options, indents, and also different horizontal and vertical positioning options. But the Edit Textiles window really isn't very complicated. I mean, it's easy to navigate, and the different features here are all quite self-explanatory. So I'm not going to go into any more detail than this. The main purpose of this lesson is to make you feel a little bit more familiar with coming here and to encourage you to change your text fields here rather than elsewhere. What I haven't yet mentioned is that if you make design changes to an individual text field elsewhere in the program, that is somewhere other than in the Edit Textiles window, any changes you make in the Edit Textiles window after this will no longer affect this particular text field. If we want this text field to use the design parameters set out by the Edit Textiles dialog again, we're going to have to reset its design. And the hotkey for this is Control Shift D. But there is one last thing that I have to address. In Sibelius, as we've mentioned briefly in the past, there are two types of objects. We have staff objects and system objects. Staff objects are marked in blue or one of the voice colors, so blue, green, orange, pink, and cyan, and they apply to one particular staff only. A system object, however, is marked in purple and applies to all staffs, in other words, the entire system. In Sibelius, at least currently, it's actually not possible to change staff text to system text or vice versa. So, if we wish to create a new text style, we first have to consider whether we need it to be staff text or system text. And our decision will influence which current text style to base our new text style on. For example, if I just need staff text, then I should base my new text style on a current staff text style such as technique or perhaps plain text. And if I require system text, then I'm going to have to base my new text style on a current system text style, such as tempo. So that's a quick rundown of some basic text principles. The reason I stress using the Edit Textiles window instead of the options listed under the Text tab is that I think you'll find that this will automatically clean up the appearance of your score and instrumental parts quite a bit. And it will also give you more control over your text and allow you to make global changes. So that's it for this lesson. I'll see you in the next one.